Breaker 1-9, there's some diesel bears hassling a chicken chunk and a cab over Pete at their two yard stick. I'm southbound, hammer down, being cool on the stool. How's it looking over your shoulder? Good, buddy. Wander up and let her go. Come on, Kentucky Cobra, over and out. Over the last hundred plus shows, we've talked about a lot of things that replace the horse, but we've never talked about anything that replaced the horse and the river. So button up your plaid shirts and hold on to your hats with the mesh in the back. This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on Peterbilt. Toot toot! James, that was quite an intro we just saw. I know it might be hard, but can you try to put into words how you're feeling right now? Speechless, really, just uh, speechless. Uh, there's so many people that I want to thank right now for getting me to this point. First and foremost, I want to thank NOS Energy Drink for partnering with me, partnering with Donut, partnering with Up to Speed. I don't think I could have got through that intro without NOS Energy Drink. Uh, also, I want to thank this Falcon. I've never met this Falcon before, but I saw him flying up in the air uh, while I was doing the intro and I thought, man, I'd really love to make NOS Energy Drink and this Falcon proud of me. You did good, James. You did good. Thank you, Falcon. Uh, from here on out, I'm just going to try and make you proud. I'm going to live to make NOS Energy Drink and this Falcon proud of me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Majestic. Who was Peter and what did he build? We're talking about semis, baby. In the 1930s, a guy named Theodore A. Peterman owned a lumber mill in Tacoma, Washington, and he needed wood for his mill. Luckily, the Pacific Northwest is full of trees and lumberjacks who cut them down. But once the trees become logs, there wasn't a quick and easy way to transport them to the mill. They were either floated down a river or hauled by steam powered tractors or real actual live buffaloes. I don't know if you've noticed, but those things aren't very fast and they weren't cutting it for T.A. Peterman. So he started picking up old surplus military trucks and rebuilding them into tractor trailers that could haul his logs. I hope this is one of the episodes where he talks fast because I got to drop a log right now. Statistics show that most of you are dropping a log. You are pooping. <laughs> Every time he got another truck, he improved it in some way, like replacing hand crank starters with electric ones. When the Great Depression left a lot of small businesses in big trouble, he bought the bankrupt Fajul Motor Company in 1938. They'd been making buses, trucks, and tractors in Oakland, California. That allowed Peterman to start building his own truck chassis, and thus, the Peterbilt Company was born. Toot toot! Toot toot! Toot toot! Toot toot! Toot toot! Toot toot! The first two models were the Steel Cab 334 and the Chain Driven 260, and they went on sale to the public in 1939. As you might expect, the Chain Driven truck idea didn't work out that well, and they dropped it pretty quickly. By 1942, almost the whole world was all pissed off at each other, and the production shifted to the war effort instead. Peterman sadly passed away just before the war ended, and his wife sold the company to seven employees, but kept the land that the business sat on. Once the war was over, commercial business quit quickly picked up, especially over the next 10 to 15 years. By then, Peterbilt was already known for making quality trucks with strong performance. They introduced the Model 280 and the 350 with the long nose cab design that would become the classic semi-truck shape for decades. The next 281 and 351 models had super long, narrow front ends that earned them the nickname Needle Nose. They were in production for over 20 years, which is probably why your idea of what a stereotypical semi-truck looks like is basically a Peterbilt needle nose. They mostly ran 14 liter Cummins diesels making around 240 horsepower and 680 to 800 pound feet of torque. <laughs> Top speed 
probably wasn't even 70 miles per hour. Peterbilt also made cab over versions with funny bubble noses. See, cab overs were popular back in the day because trucking was highly regulated by the 1935 Motor Carrier Act. A truck length was limited to 65 feet. With the cab over the engine, the truck would have a much shorter wheelbase. That allowed more space for more cargo. And that means more money but they're not as safe. They're harder to work on and they're not as comfortable for drivers as conventional curb sniffers. Hmm? <laughs> when the trucking industry was deregulated and the length limit was extended to 75 feet, cab overs fell out of favor. You don't see flat nose trucks in the States much anymore, mostly just in Europe and Asia, but they call them lorries, probably because they all look like Hugh Laurie, who's a famous British actor. As the 1950s rolled on, construction of the new interstate highway system got underway. Smooth, paved roads that crisscrossed the country meant goods could be quickly shipped by truck virtually anywhere. And in 1956, containerized intermodel shipping was invented. So tons of stuff could be shoved in a big metal box and moved directly from ship to train to truck to Walmart. For even at this very moment, some kind of a truck is bringing you something you need. Business started booming big time, baby. In 1958, Peterman's widow, Ida, decided to sell the land out from under the factory. Peterbilt shareholders just couldn't stomach having to build a whole new plant, so they sold the company to Pacific Car and Foundry Company, which is now known as Packar. Pacific Car and Foundry built them a brand new factory just down the road in Newark, California, where they'd stay for almost 30 years. The 60s brought a lighter cab made from aluminum and the Unilite tilt-over cab that could be pivoted a full 90 degrees for better access. A flying bird hood ornament was added above the red oval badge, two things that are unchanged in new Peterbilt trucks until today. In 67, the wide nose model 359 came out and solidified Peterbilt as one of the top names in the long haul big rig game. You could order a 359 any way you wanted it, just like Lamborghini. There were endless engine and transmission combos to choose from and options like aluminum sleeper cabs, chrome breather canisters, tall exhaust stacks, and bling grills. The last 400 produced were numbered special editions with custom paint jobs and they're worth bank today. By the 1970s, trucker culture was a full-on thing. Truckers were seen as modern cowboys and outlaws, and everyone wanted plaid shirts, mesh hats, and mustaches. They drove long stretches of desolate highway and warned each other about highway patrol using sick lingo on their CB radios. It's romantic as the freedom and romance of the open road captured everyone's imagination and made its way into a lot of popular entertainment. In 1971, Steven Spielberg's first movie, Duel, featured an unseen trucker in a rusty Peterbilt needle nose tanker chasing a man in a red Plymouth all over the desert. In 1976, the CB lingo song Convoy. <laughs> about a bunch of truckers avoiding toll booths and speed traps was number one on the billboard charts for a week. Snowman the bootleg trucker and bandit Burt Reynolds in a fire chicken brought CB slang and kitschy radio handles into the mainstream. Move on a little bit good buddy, because the snowman is coming through. There were so many trucker movies that practically every 70s action star got one. Actually, this is starting to sound like a really cool Saturday night. Do you want to watch these together? That's 10 for Roger, I'm coming over. By the 1980s though, truckers had a scuzzier reputation and the masses shifted their attention to hairspray, synthesizers, and teen angst. But there was still one good trucker, Optimus Prime. The original Optimus Prime was a cab over semi. Where would we be without the Transformers? Frickin' nowhere, that's where. We certainly wouldn't have the baddest ass costumes you've ever seen. <laughs> Semi-trucks found another home off the highways and out of the larger public eye. When truckers took a break from working, they started to race at local ovals and drag strips. <laughs> Truck tuners cranked up the boost and started to roll some serious coal. The 80s also saw the launch of the most popular Peterbilt of all time, the Model 379. Owner operators bought more of them than any other truck, and they were a favorite on the show circuit. Yeah. 
There's semi-truck shows. Big rigs drive over 175 billion miles a year in the US alone, delivering 68% of everything that we buy. That works out to about 60,000 pounds of crap per person every year. That's 823 Nolans. Even though the original Optimus Prime was a cab over, the live action Optimus Prime was a 379, which is, not accurate <laughs> to canon. It's also the truck in the heist from my son Nolan's favorite movie of all time, The Fast and the Furious. That was supposedly a 379. Or maybe it was a 359. Um, I'm gonna admit that I can't tell them apart and the internet says it's both. And if you're an expert on semi-truck things, please let me know in the comments below, which one is it? As time went on, Peterbilt started fancying up their interiors. You could even get four different dash colors. There's over 3 million long haul truckers in the US and a lot of those people live in their rigs for most of the year. Today, these long distance trucks are like tiny motorhomes. You can get a Peterbilt Model 587 sleeper cab with a 30 inch aisle, swivel chairs, closets, and under bunk storage, or the new 579 Ultra Loft high roof sleeper with double bunks for driver teams, space for a full size microwave, a 32 inch TV, and a cabinet specifically designed for storing two CPAP machines. Now those are for treating sleep apnea. That's a medical condition that causes snoring. At the next party you go to, you're kind of nervous. Just like walk up to someone and say, hey, do you know what a CPAP machine is? Did you know that Optimus Prime was originally a cab over truck? And then just stare, just stare at them. That'll work, you'll probably find a girlfriend. <laughs> Modern Peterbilt trucks are more aerodynamic and more fuel efficient than ever. The Peterbilt 386 was actually the first semi truck to be designated environmentally friendly by the EPA. So good job, Peterbilt. Another way big rigs are becoming more efficient is by switching to automated manual transmissions. <laughs> think that this would have happened earlier. I mean, we've had automatic transmissions for over half a century, but they're not traditional automatics with torque converters. They're really just what they sound like. Automated manuals that still use a clutch. Fuel economy in these is better than regular manuals and the transmission is up to 400 pounds lighter than an automatic. That means the truck can haul 400 pounds more payload. That means more money, baby. More money, baby. New trucks are starting to get all the new car tech, stuff like adaptive cruise control for stop and go traffic, forward collision prevention, and lane keep assist. Lane keeping is probably the biggest help for truckers. You spend literally all day making small steering corrections just to stay between lanes. Peterbilt and other companies are also working on platooning technology that digitally links trucks in a convoy. The trucks will automatically talk to each other so they can follow at super close distances at the same speed, which reduces traffic and improves MPGs. They're drafting, baby. Let's get into what you really want to know about. And big old diesel boy engines, what does it take to haul 80,000 pounds down the road? Peterbilt's run a couple versions of a 12.9 liter inline six engine that weighs 2,600 pounds dry. The top of the line MX-13 engine makes 510 buff horses and up to 1,850 pound feet of twist at nine, 900 RPM. That's the opposite of VTEC. <laughs> They're designed to go 60 to 75,000 miles between oil changes and run a million miles, a million miles before needing a rebuild. 500 is a big figure for stock diesel horsepower, but sled pulling and drag racing semis are now running compound turbo setups and able to put out over 3,000 buff hearse babies. <laughs> 2019 is Peterbilt's 80th anniversary. Happy birthday, buddy. And this past January, their one millionth truck rolled out of their Denton, Texas factory. They gave it away to a certified Peterbilt super fan at the Mid-America Trucking Show. Rick McClurkin, Peterbilt's number one super fan. You know that, that's a damn fine tribute to a long legacy of impressive big rigs.